YouTube, it's been a little bit since I dropped the video. Listen guys, we've been doing a lot of shorts just because I've been so busy. I haven't been able to create brand new content for you guys. Shout out to Georgie, my video editor, part of the team here for holding it down because man, without him, this channel would probably be non-existent right now. You're always gonna have seasons when you're trying to grow. You gotta take a step back from something so that you can focus on another thing. It's balance. YouTube is very important. I'll never forget, you know, what got me here, and it's you guys, it's YouTube. So I appreciate you guys, and I appreciate y'all's patience. We are gonna make some changes that I will be announcing here soon with the way the channels are gonna work, but I wanna get back to my roots here with YouTube and educating you guys. So we're definitely gonna do that, and I'm just gonna change the structure of the channels a little bit. I'm open to suggestions from you guys, 100%. I have a concept already that I think we're gonna do. Hopefully your suggestions in the comments that I'm gonna be reading either confirms I'm going in the right direction or may make me wanna pivot. So let me know what you guys wanna see with the channels. Should I separate these things, right? Should I have this channel to just be tutorials, focus on my other channel to focus on the other stuff? And then I was thinking about doing a Tomb 45 channel that features all the Tomb 45 barbers and uh, barbers around the world. So what do y'all think about that? Let me know. All right, y'all, like I said, we're going back to the basics. We're going back to the basics, guys. I combed the hair out. I don't need to consult with this client because I've been cutting his hair forever, for a decade. He hasn't gotten his hair cut in a while, but I can tell you guys, obviously his hair is longer, but you want to ask him when the last time they got their hair cut. It's probably been like, what, a month and a half? We could get away with taking off. It's tight on the side. So if he's a new client that you know, you're not going to give him a light trim. Where a lot of barbers, they're like scared to cut hair and they give him a light trim. This guy's never coming back if you do that right so it's never too bad to ask questions but make sure you ask precise questions don't try to sit here and figure out a cut if they can't explain it if they can't explain it then it's your job as a professional to try to figure out exactly what they're looking for because that can make a break whether you're going to retain this client or not and guys like at headlines we get people through the doors but if you can't retain anybody it doesn't really matter does it hey real quick i want to shout out this company man they made me these custom shears look at this Dive Legend 245. The brand is Diamond One. Shout out to them, man, for making me these shares. All right, hey, venga, vamos, chico. All right, guys, so real quick, I like to cut the top first. He doesn't do any shear work or anything like that. A lot of you guys are kind of like, you're the type where you want to force people to get their hair cut the way they get their hair cut. This man's nearly 70 years old. And so if he says he likes a six on top, give him a six on top. Now, you know, if there's certain things about his hair that I see, could be better, then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to ask questions that may inspire some thought. What I would mean by that is like, if I see a certain part of his hair is hard to control, I'll ask them their crown area. Hey man, do you ever struggle styling your hair? Like, especially around the crown area, does it like stick up and stuff? Yeah, man, it's something I've always had. It's always been a problem, right? At that point, you're kind of inspiring them to think about that and say, yeah, man, I have a lot of clients that have a similar hair growth pattern in the crown area and I could tell that's probably problematic for you. You know, one thing that you can consider is doing this, this, and this. I'm not pushing them to do anything, but what might happen is they think about it, they go home, do some research about it. Even if the haircut's not exactly how they wanted it, they might try me again and say, hey man, I was thinking about that idea you had and I wanna try it out this time. Oh, and by the way, last time could, you did this, could you do this instead? That's how you could retain a client, even if it ain't the perfect cut the first time around. Cause it's hard to give somebody the exact cut they want the first time around. If you're not a barber and you're watching this, just know that that's a thing. It's difficult to perfect your cut right away, but if it's close enough and it looks like the barber cares, you know, give him another shot. All right, so this is quick because the top is already done. And that was a number six open with the grain on the top. So I'm going around the perimeter, the longest length on the side, and I'm just going a number six against the grain. And the reason why I'm doing that is I'm just preparing this length, the longest length here on the side, for the clipper work we're gonna do on the side. Cause he just wants a, a taper. Try to make the cut comfortable. So I'm constantly blowing this hair off. So the lowest length we're gonna do here on the sides is the number three. Notice I didn't cut all this down here cause I knew I was gonna cut it anyways with that number six. And I'm gonna go up to that number three. And I'm not too worried about the very, very bottom here. When I do my taper, I like to kind of shorten it a little bit around the, the hairline anyways. Hey, did it pull a little bit right there? It did. The real reason why I asked that, it isn't because I, I don't know if it pulled, I knew it pulled, 
I just want my client to let them know that I'm aware. That way they're comfortable and they don't think it's gonna happen again. At this point, he knows that I'm aware of it. I'm gonna try to make sure it doesn't happen again. And I'm gonna take my time now. Instead of, you know, trying to go through his thick hair and risk it pulling, tugging his hair again, he's gonna notice that I'm taking my time a little bit, that I care. Ray, do you feel like I care? <laughs> Why you laughing? Bro, it made me look bad in front of my in front of my viewers, bro. Yeah, you do care. <laughs> my brother-in-law, I don't care that much. Right. Now I'm gonna open it up. I'm gonna go up a little bit higher, preparing it for that number four. Being careful it doesn't tug. All right, next up is that number four, guys. All right, you guys can see that's blended in nicely. We got a nice foundation. Uh, this side didn't blend in as easily, so I'm just going to open it up. And guys, that's totally normal. It happens. One side can blend a lot easier than the other. Right, I'm going to start with my two open to set my foundation. And it should blend right in because, remember, we left off with a three on the sides here. All right, now two closed underneath that. And I got a nice foundation. I know I'm blending in to that number two. I think setting this up like this helps you not just speed up the, the, the taper process, but it allows you to also have a better quality. You're not trying to create a blurry blend into a bunch of bulk. I don't know if you've ever tried to do that, guys. It's almost like you can't see nothing because you're trying to blend into a bunch of bulk that you're gonna cut later anyways. I'm gonna do it the way Mo does it, Mo's quick with it. I gotta copy Mo a little bit here. I'm gonna go right into my one close, debulk this, open it up, use my corners and dark areas. A little bit of a risk, but Worst case, I just followed up with my one and a half guard. Remember, he doesn't want like a high tape or anything like that. And while I'm here, I'll go ahead and start blending the beard in. So one open, one close. Try to do as much as you can in the same space. All right, same thing here. All right, now we're open. That one and a half guard is gonna take care of that. So I'm not too worried about that right now. No, right, now I'm one open. I'm gonna go one and a half guard open. I didn't really need to use it here, but since I have it anyways, sometimes your eyes collide to you. So I went ahead and used it anyways. This is where it's really gonna help the taper out the most. All right, now I'm all the way closed. That's solid. A ball tape is gonna go really, really nice with this, especially with his hair. If you've seen me cut his hair before on this channel, his hair grows all kinds of crazy directions. Okay, one and a half closed now. I'm gonna go ahead and bald him out. I'm gonna switch to my brush now, because with the brush, I can clear the debris and see what's going on. And one thing I like to do is make sure I brush off my blade. Every time I grab this brush, I brush off the blade first. That way I'm not throwing more debris on the actual haircut. We're gonna start blade open. I'm gonna try my best not to create a line, but if I do, that's easy. We take it out with, with the half guard. It's a little bit of a line there, that's gonna come out with the, uh, with the half guard. Now I'm gonna go closed. I'm gonna go up a quarter of the way, open it up a, bit, a little bit, one notch, open it up one notch. Open it up one notch. If it doesn't look great, then I'll go from clipper open, close it up a notch, close it up a notch, close it up a notch. And while I'm here, I'll go ahead and start to fade this out. So same thing, blade open. And you need the same amount of space to create this blend into the beard. I forgot to go ahead and blend this side with the one while I was here. Blade open, trying not to create another line here. If you do, that's okay. That's just your guide to let you know, hey, in this area, we need to work with the half guard. Okay, so a little bit of a line there, perfect. So we can go down here, it's all the way close, open it up, open it up another notch. Now I'm all the way open again, all right? And the half guard is gonna take care of the rest of that. Close, a little bit open, a little bit open, a little bit open, all the way open. Make sure we blend this side up. All right, now we can use the half guard to try to finalize the blend. So I like to start open and debulk that dark area, all right, see how it's it's lighter already? So now, as we close it up, that half guard is starting to blend in. And now, if you need a drop down because there's still a little bit of a line, you can take off the guard and go ahead and blend it lower in that area. Or we'll put it back on if you see a little bit of a line. Struggling a little bit here, because his hair is so dark here. So I'm gonna take some time while I'm here to try to lighten that up. Now, there's a little bit of a line there, which I can clean up in a bit, but for my new barbers, you could look at a video all you want and say, man, I could have done that better. But until you cut that person's hair, you do not know how it's gonna react to your style of cutting. Damn, that trick was sharp. Why you didn't tell me that trimmer was sharp? 
Damn. It happens to the best of us, but what you do about it is what matters. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab the 245 Shave Gel because it has aloe vera and vitamin E. Vitamin E replenishes the skin, aloe vera soothes it. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this on here because if I don't, it's gonna get worse. And then we will come back and you'll see after the cut, it's gonna look better. All right, so we got the half guard now. And again, it's all the way open because I, I just wanna lighten the area that I wanna fade out just to make my, my job easier. Now I start closing it. You guys can see the blend starting to come together. Now I'm all the way closed and I'm looking for the darkest areas to lighten up. Do the same thing on this side. Guys, we're at 23 minutes right now, the cut. In about one minute, most of the cut will be done, which will give me seven minutes to line him up and detail. Most of the cut is done now. We're gonna go ahead and line him up and then we'll start doing some refining, some finishing. So I try to look for like the, the lightest area where I can create a C cup. It's about right here. And then we'll go ahead and start to carve out this C cup. And I kind of sketch it out. I like to sketch before I draw. I'll go ahead with my comb. And just taper that a bit so it lays down nicer. I'm gonna give y'all a nugget because I don't know about all the critics, but I can tell you I've been booked before doing 100 haircuts a week. So I know I can build clientele and I know what people prefer. What I try to do when I do these C cups is I try to do it as natural as I possibly can. Now, that doesn't mean that it's gonna be even on both sides because naturally it doesn't mean that both sides are naturally even. People are not perfect. I can't tell you how many videos I've done where somebody comments, the C cups don't look the same. 90% of clients that come in, their C cups are different. So what I do is I try to make it as natural as possible. I look at it and if it looks ridiculously off, I'll try my best to refine it. Like this side grows naturally lower. So I'm gonna come back in here and I'm gonna try to bring it up just a tad bit without pushing him back, okay? But I know that it's not gonna be perfect and I'm okay with that. What's not gonna happen is it's not gonna grow, grow back ugly on my clients. But if you push somebody back a half inch just to match both sides, they're gonna notice it. And you know some people, if it's way off, ask the client. I gotta be light-handed back here because these trimmers are sharp as hell. But I try not to line up a bunch of his hair. I don't shave it down, nothing like that. Whatever naturally just wants to lay down, that's what I'll line up. It's gonna grow back nicer. It's just gonna look nicer, in my opinion. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and use the razor now, and then we'll do the taper. Cause with the razor, then I could really see what kind of hairline he got. All right, you guys, at this point, we're gonna go ahead and start detailing. The cut's done, we don't need to spend a lot of time on it. And if your client's happy, guys, that's what matters. Unless your client's never happy, like this client, it doesn't matter anyways. You just let him out your chair. He's gonna come back even though he's on, he likes being unhappy. Damn, this side is tough, guys. Not where I want it to be. All right, you guys, we can style his hair. We can put some clay in it, simple. It's not gonna get you a million likes on Instagram, but this is a barbershop cut. The only thing I can do is, is recommend cosmetic surgery for him. That's the only way he'll look better. All right, guys.